welcome to another episode of the Fan Zone Podcast. Your home for all things Bolton Wanderers up the trotters, the Northwest's number one podcast. Ladies and gents, we are back again. The Fan Zone Podcast. We can't get enough of you. We are finding out today our top five Bolton Wanderers moments. Get yours in the comments. Don't forget to to share yours with us. But we're, we're with Ben first, so Ben. Over to you. Top five Wanderers moments. Fire away. Right. So, number five. I mean, I'm just going to preface this with I've been a Bolton fan for probably 14, 15 years, probably about that. But a season ticket. And the first eight or nine were pretty rubbish. Probably the same for you, Ben. So, they're probably going to be all very recent. So, we start off with number five. I am going uh, with one back in the day, to be fair. Uh, with Chung Yong Lee's winner at Birmingham in the FA Cup quarter final in 2011, if I recall right. This is probably my earliest memory of supporting Bolton and having something to celebrate. Um, obviously, a last minute winner always goes down well. And Chung Yong Lee, one of my favourite players from the latter era of uh, the Premier League days. And obviously, big Kevin Davis winning the flick on to send it up. It was just a. Uh, it just kind of summed us up as a team at that point it was you know if you were gonna if you're gonna create a typical Bolton goal towards the end of the Premier League year it's a long ball forward to flick on for Kevin Davis and then a header at the back post but yeah and obviously I, I mean I was about well, 2011 I would have been nine just gone nine then so uh uh yeah very early days for me probably one of my first away games as well actually so not a bad time and obviously sent us to Wembley at the time we were buzzing a month later or so obviously not uh not the Wembley um, visit we wanted to happen. But yeah, as a moment, that is up there with the best. Okay, and going more recently with number four, I have gone for uh, Dion Charles's last-minute winner at Shrewsbury. You're going to notice a theme here. Um, away games and last-minute winners. Uh, I've gone for this. I mean, in the grand scheme of um, sort of Bolton's recent history, it's a bit of an insignificant game, but... For me personally, I have been to seven away games that season before that game. Six of them were losses where we hadn't scored. Um, sorry, six of them were losses. One of them we'd scored three at Stockport and lost 5-3, which was horrible. And the other one was a nil-nil draw away at Wigan in the League Cup where we lost on penalties. So I'd seen seven away games, six of them goalless, and one of them <laughs> where we scored away in a loss to a National League team. So it was pretty awful. And... Um, just about a month before, I went to Fleetwood away and Accrington away, back to back. Both awful, wet, cold, in the rain, lost. And it was just, I, me and my dad both going, why are we going to another away game? But yeah, it's a lovely day in Shrewsbury in late January, early February, I think. And it was um, Charles's first goal for us after, I think, three or four games where it looked yeah, promising, yeah, yeah. but not got off the mark. And I mean, it was just an unbelievable goal. It was one of them games that was kind of petering out into nothing. Oh yeah, unbelievable. It was, yeah, Dapo flicked it across and he just flicked it up, volleyed top corner, went absolutely mad. And then that was obviously the start of our amazing run towards the end of the season. That kind of turned around our season, I guess. I mean, even though, you know, we finished mid-table, but it, we, I think we were 16th, 17th before that. And then obviously the week after was the Sunderland game. So yeah, that just kickstart an amazing time amazing few months for Bolton and an amazing time for Dion Charles in a Bolton shirt. Number three, I've gone, I was tossing up between number three and number two, but I've gone for the comeback at Mansfield in February 21, I think it was, February, March. I mean, we were awful for the first two thirds of the season and we kept having little runs. We had a little run in November and a little run start of January, I think, where we looked like we were getting back on track and then straight away we were hit with a bad run again. And then, the week before Mansfield, we'd uh, we beat Steven, I think it was 2-0 at home. And then, so it was again, it was, oh, you know, we look like we might be getting back on track a bit. And then Mansfield, Tuesday night, 2-0 down after 60 minutes. I remember, I can't remember who scored for them, but uh, J- uh, Jilks chucked it in the back of his own net after having, after being basically flawless since he came in the team. And then, yeah, just chucked on some subs. Um, Declan John scored a cross, then they scored an old goal about five minutes later. And then, Arthur Ganu with a super sub um, <laughs> cut inside and smacked it bottom corner. I mean, some there were some memories from that season where me and my dad were going mad in 
my bedroom or my, the living room yeah. or wherever the game's on. Yeah. And that was one of many away games where I'd love to have been there. But at the time, I don't think I've gone mad at a football game as much as that, you know, sitting in my own living room as much as that. Yeah. And again, that just kick-started an amazing run. After that, we so we won that, then we won the next four, then we drew away at Bradford, then we won four after that. So it would have been would have been eleven in a row if we uh, if we beat Bradford, and then obviously we went we got promoted that season. I firmly believe if we'd have, if we'd have lost that game and you know kind of petered out to a two and a loss there, it would have been mid to low table for that end of the season. But that kind of that mentality that that kept us going in so many games that season that was you know yet again there to be two 0 down with half an hour twenty minutes left and come back like we did was unbelievable. Number two, I have gone for. Um, getting Jones' header at Wembley. Good uh, shout. Good shout. I mean, I could have picked any of the goals here, but I mean, with it being getting Jones with his losing losing his mum just uh, very recently before, he basically burst into tears as soon as he scored. It was emotional for everyone, um, and uh, it's just one of them players that had, you know he's he's been with us since the start of uh, the Ever era. He's um, although he's not been in the best of form of the last sort of year. He's been one where he's kind of dropped off and then came back into form um, quite a few times. Um, and yeah, it was just a great way of rounding off an amazing three years at the time, four years, was it? No, yeah, three seasons, was it, I think, wasn't it? Um, yeah, and obviously, to make it 4-0 against the league leaders who won the league with 101 points at that time, obviously you can say it's the Papa John's, whatever, maybe they weren't as much up for it. But I mean, and then that signalled half an hour after it where we just passed it around and enjoyed um, being 4 nil up in a final at Wembley in the sun for half an hour. It was, yeah, unbelievable. Number one, I think he's pretty obvious. I think anyone um, anyone post sort of 2000, po- born post 2000 would have this as their number one. I've, I'd thought about going um, the promotion at Crawley, but that felt kind of not inevitable, but that kind of felt it was on the card to the last sort of two months. And then I thought about doing the promotion against Peterborough or even the away game against Port Vale when we went up in League One. But again, we kind of had that wrapped up kind of with five or six games yeah. to go. But I know where you're going with this one. You know where I'm going. It came absolutely out of nowhere. We had we had eight games towards the end of the season and we needed to win one. One of the eight games to stay up in uh, 2017-18 one game and from the first seven we lost six and drew one and the week before it was Burton away and Burton were the other ones that were struggling down there who we did eventually relegate and we lost one nil at Burton away was it one nil or two nil I can't remember and it, at that point just felt wow we've absolutely blown it we've done it Bolton style we we were basically we were basically up we beat Villa at home didn't we um, yeah and we were basically up that was it and then, yeah, crumbled for the next seven games until uh, the 86th and the 88th minute, I think it was, David Wheater yeah. and uh, and Aaron Wilbraham, the absolute saviours. And I mean, that season was just, I looked and we'd scored, we'd scored three goals in a game twice before that season. Um, <laughs> one was a, it was a three all the way at Sunderland midweek and a three one win at home to Barnsley, which is in December. So we hadn't scored three goals in a game for 25 games it was. And then, just when we need it, I mean, Adam Afondra, the absolute saviour off the bench. I think he came on at half time, and obviously he scored the one to put us one 0 ahead. And then they got two, and then he set up the two winning goals. And yeah, I mean, for the for the time I've I've been a Bolton fan, a bit of a Bolton legend, and so is Aaron Wilbraham. Um, <laughs> just for that, just for that one goal. Um, well, he's not got how, much to be remembered by before that, has he? <laughs> I know it's funny how how players can basically not do much at all and not not be hated but be you know for, what, what why did we sign him what was the point i think he was about 35 at the time it was like a last minute it was like a cameron jerome signing really and and uh yeah i mean he he scored a late equalizer at sheffield wednesday i remember and then don't and then he didn't score until that that game against forest i remember looking at the team sheet before and then it was wilbraham on, on his own up front and i was thinking what what is going What's on? The guy scored one goal all season. What what's going on? But yeah, it was written in the stars, wasn't it? He had a he was an all right game as well. He hit like the woodwork a couple of times, and I was like, "What's going on here?" Yeah, he did. I know it was. Yeah, it was amazing. As I said, to be such a poor attacking team all season, and to have such a, a striker that just basically didn't score all season, for it all to come together 
in the in the last game in the last minute as well. Yeah, it's special. So yeah, you've heard my top five Bolton memories. Uh, now on to Ben's. Well, I've got a feeling a couple of ours might be a little bit similar, Ben. Um, yeah. Obviously, similar age, been Wanderers fans for a similar amount of time. Although, ironically, my <laughs> in at number five, and it is it is number five, uh, surprisingly, um, which is quite ironic. But mine, <laughs> this is only because, okay, I must, I must clear this up. This is only because it's my first Bolton memory, right? <laughs> this is the first memory I have of watching Wanderers, and this is what set me up. For an absolutely torrid time. Um, it was 2011, so I would have been nine, and I got took to my first game, uh, and we played Chelsea at home, and um, we lost five one, and Frank Lampard scored an hat trick after. Uh, I think he'd just been left out of the uh, the England team, and he just absolutely rinsed us. Um, and yeah, since then I've I've. For my sins, been a Bolton fan. Um, yeah. So yeah, my I've early memories of being there. a Bolton fan were basically whenever we, you know, Chelsea or United had come and we just get battered every single time. <laughs> it seemed like Rooney and Lampard scored a hat trick every time he came here. Yeah. yeah. Well, I had to put it in there because I thought, you know what, not many other Wanderers fans will have this in their top five. That's for certain. But uh, my first ever Wanderers, I think that might have actually been my first game. Um. Yeah. I went with like the, it was like um the football team I was in at the time did like a trip if you will, um and yeah, well I mean, I'd I'd like to say I've never looked back, but I think there's been a few occasions where I've been like I don't know why I'm bothering with this. In at number four, similar, well very similar to you. Uh, I've got Arthur Ganuma down the road, um against Mansfield. That game was a turning point for Ian Ever and a turning point for Bolton Wanderers. Um and what 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 style to do it in the the limbs in everybody's front room up and down Bolton I think we're unmatched I remember going absolutely mental bouncing around my front room uh, and like you said that's one of them games where you just would have been done anything to have been there number three I've gone for I was tossing up between Sunderland at home but what I've gone for instead just as a little bit different was Bakayoko's goal against Oxford that day. That was yeah, a yeah. phenomenal Good away job. end. Um, the limbs in the away end as we got that late winner. I think, I'm not sure if that was like the start or sort of halfway through of just like a series of games where we'd only score late on. <laughs> and we just never seemed to be able to put teams to bed within like 60 minutes. And we just had to go about our business dead late on. Um and that, it that did feel a... like for basically the first two seasons, we 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 just hung on till about the last fifteen minutes and scored goals late on. For I remember seeing a start. I think it was, I think it was about halfway through our second season, and goals in the last fifteen minutes in the top four tiers. It was us and City, and then about fifteen goals less everyone else. It was mental how how often yeah. we did that. Yeah, it was. Uh... <laughs> it was bizarre. I think, yeah. did Yon Daddy get a goal as well dead late on? He threw his shirt off and he was going... He, there was just games where we'd just not not really play very well for, for 60 minutes. And then all of a sudden, the 30 minutes, we just you know pressed the go button and there we were. So, Bakayoko yeah. against Oxford is another one for me. Number two, you might crucify me for this, but I've gone Wilbraham against Forrest. Um that goal, that game just speaks for itself. One of the best days supporting Wanderers for me. Um, I remember the people in front of me celebrated that hard. They actually punched me in the face and they caught me right on my eye. And I went home and my eye was absolutely massive. Um, <laughs> I remember running around the pitch, not, I couldn't even see out my eye. Um, but that was just an absolutely unbelievable day. There's not many. I don't think there'll be very many days like that. And you can you can celebrate in the way that we did as as football fans. So for me, that takes number two, and number one. I think most of you will probably know which one it's going to be. That uh, was of course Plymouth at Wembley. Um, so far to date, the best day I've had as a Bolton Wanderers fan. Mm -hmm. After <laughs> after being absolutely hammered by Chelsea five one as my first game, uh, <laughs> and seeing plenty of games pretty similar to that. 
it was nice to finally do it to somebody else and to do it when it mattered. Um, so, yeah, Plymouth at Wembley. I don't think there's been many games better. So, for me, that takes number one spot because what a day out that was. In the sun, beers. Like you said, the goal scorers as well. Catcher getting one was really nice. Yeah. Geth getting one was, yeah, that was just unbelievable. If you could, day. if you could like draw up the perfect, the perfect, the whole day and game, that would that would be it, wouldn't it? That'd be you know, it. You have yeah, to say the goal scorers in the sun to be comfortable with half an hour left. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, it was it was unbelievable. Yeah, a stark contrast to Oxford, put it that way. So yeah, that's our both our top five bottom wonders moments. Um, just want to say a massive thank you to uh, all of you watching and who've watched over the last couple of years as we've recently hit a thousand subscribers. Um, if you want to help us hit the next milestone, if you're new around here, uh, hit the subscribe button uh, down below and hit the bell as you'll uh, you'll get notified whenever we go live and whenever we do one of these videos as we're looking to do much more of in the future. Um, so yeah, uh, get your top five moments in the comments below. And if you have any, any other ideas of um, these type of videos you want us to see, you know, top five goals, top five matches, stuff like that, um, get them down in the comments and we'll be sure to get to them. So, yeah, thank you to Ben uh, for joining me today. You're very welcome. And uh, for those of you who are watching, if you sign up and become a member, you might see some even more content from us. So just go and have a nosy. It's like three quid a month. Yeah, go and have a look. You know you want to. So, yeah, like and subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, thank you for watching. Come on, you whites.